Long before the United States was even a thing, China saw itself as the civilized center of the universe. For hundreds of years, it was indeed home to a magnificent civilization, way ahead of those soon-to-be brilliant European powerhouses. When the Europeans started exploring the world in the 15th century in what we now call the Age of Discovery, the Chinese considered Europe nothing but an outback of sorts. But scholars tell us its self-imposed isolation was to be its undoing, and soon those European countries would become the center of the world. The United States would get on the map, and many years later some people would forget China's incredible history. Some people considered it as an uncivilized outback. Right now, these two nations are the economic behemoths, but how do the people match up? Before we start comparing folks, let's just have a look at how many people actually live in these nations. These are estimates, of course, and remember that many people in both countries don't make headcount. Nonetheless, according to the live numbers right now given by Worldometers, the USA has a population of 329,966,970. China has a population of 1,436,364,105. We are talking about mainland China today, we should say. It'll get too confusing if we try and compare the US with the mainland China as well as, say, Hong Kong and Taiwan. If you want to know China's relationship to Taiwan, let's just say it's complicated and you should do some research. As for Hong Kong, we guess you've been reading a lot about Hong Kong and mainland China relations as of late. According to the International Monetary Fund's World Economic Outlook database in 2019, the GDP for the US was $20.49 trillion. This was the largest GDP in the world. Second was China at $13.41 trillion. That gap, according to analysts, is going to shorten year by year as we head into the near future. But then you've got something called GDP based on PPP, or Purchasing Power Parity. And if you look at that, China has the biggest economy. The USA was again $20.49 trillion, but China's was $25.27 trillion, according to the IMF. The simple way to explain the difference is that nominal GDP is based on the currencies of countries converted to the US dollar. When we look at PPP, we take an approach based on what's called a basket of goods. Let's say a basket in the US costs 6 bucks, but in China it only costs 4 bucks. What does that mean? Well, if both countries sold everything they owned, the US would get more cash. But what if they didn't trade and just made stuff? That would mean China could make more stuff, and that's why it's sometimes called the biggest economy in the world. But we're talking about people today and not countries. The reason we're discussing money in the first place is because we want to know what each person would have if all the cash was shared. We call this purchasing power per capita, which basically means per head. Then you have GDP, nominal purchasing power per capita, and GDP, purchasing power parity per capita. Please don't give up on us if this is starting to make you frustrated. We'll get to the simple stuff soon. In the USA, if you look at nominal GDP and divide it, you get about $62,000. There are a lot more people in China, so their nominal GDP per capita is closer to $10,000. If we look at PPP per capita, China's goes up to around $20,000 and the USA stays the same. Does this mean life is much easier in the USA? We looked at statistics released by China's National Bureau of Statistics in 2019, and this is what we found. If people in the country earned $295 a month, it was said to be in a low-income category. We are converting Chinese yuan to the US dollar here. If they earned anywhere from $295 to $740 a month, they were said to be in the middle income bracket. And if they earned $740 to $1480, their income was said to be relatively high. Anyone earning more than that was a baller. Ok, so now we went to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and we found that the median income in the country for 2019 was around $3600 a month. If you don't know, median is not average. What it means is the number right in the middle. So half have more than $3600 and half have less. That would make a lot of people in the USA ballers in China, but we should say here that when China released those figures and categories, a lot of Chinese people complained. There's a big difference in the cost of living in downtown Shanghai and a rural town in the hinterlands of the country. Minimum wage in China, by the way, is set locally. So in Shanghai, it might be $360 a month, but somewhere not as expensive, it might be $160 a month. The US might change from state to state too, so it could be $725 an hour and it might be $14 per hour. Per month, that might be right around $1,200 or $2,250. As for working hours, the labor law of People's Republic of China said people should not work more than 44 hours a week. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, that's about the average in the USA. We say average because we found reports that some folks in the US were doing 12-hour shifts six days a week in factories. Some people have more than one job too. 
We found in the US that you can legally work more than 40 hours a week, but by law, you must be paid more by the hour for the extra hours. So the US citizen seems to earn more cash in general. By the way, when the World Bank ranked countries in 2018 in terms of inequality, the US and China weren't that far apart. But then we looked at one quality of life index and the USA was placed at 13th while China was placed at 67th. So do people in the USA have a better quality of life? Well, it's just so hard to say, it's hard to break down. China has more poverty, but the USA has its pockets of unemployment, crime, and addiction. We're just not going to go there, and we'll concentrate on other matters. Believe it or not though, there is something called a World Happiness Report, and it's compiled each year by the United Nations. At the top for the last report was Finland, followed by Denmark and Norway. Even the Brits were in 15th, and they seem to be experts in being disgruntled. Where were the USA and China? The answer is the US was ranked at 19th and China was ranked all the way down in 93rd place. How does this list get compiled? Does the UN look at how many people are smiling? No, they look at areas such as spending ability, social support, life expectancy, corruption, and freedom to make life choices. Life expectancy in China, by the way, is 76 for both men and women. In the US, it's 79, so that's better than China, but for a developed nation, not very good. You might live longer in the USA, but you might also live some of that time in a jail or in a prison. In 2018, a report from the Bureau of Justice Statistics said that for every 100,000 people living in the US, there are 655 of them doing time behind bars. In China, per 100,000, there are only 118 people behind bars. Does this mean with all the people locked up in the US, the country is much safer than China? No, not at all is the short answer. We've done a safety comparison of the two countries before and there is no doubt more to fear in the US in terms of crime. Saying that, if you're a Chinese person, you are living in the country that is widely known as the surveillance state that tops all surveillance states. The day we write this, the New York Times opened an article with this paragraph. Chinese authorities are knitting together old and state-of-the-art technologies, phone scanners, facial recognition cameras, face and fingerprint databases, and many others, into sweeping tools for authoritarian control. Ok, so the US has spied on its own citizens from time to time and whistleblowers might find themselves in difficult positions, but we will say that the average Chinese citizen has more to worry about when it comes to a big brother. Folks in the USA have much more freedom to vent their feelings, to protest, and to just get lost in society. We should say here something of importance, and that's that the individual right in the USA is taken seriously. In China, people are much more aware that they're part of a whole, working for the whole. How do Americans and Chinese compare physically though? Let's start with height. In the USA, the average height for a woman is 5 feet 4 inches, and for a man it's 5 feet 9 inches. In China, for a man it's 5 feet 6 and a half inches, and for a woman, 5 feet 2 inches. Expect to see a lot taller people in the USA. You can also expect to see many folks in the USA growing horizontally too. The average weight for a woman in the USA is 168.4 pounds, and the average weight for a man is 195.8 pounds. In China, the average weight for a woman is 125 pounds, and for males, 145 pounds. What about beliefs, as in religion? Well, you might not know that the vast majority in China identify as being non-religious. That doesn't mean that they might not have a kind of folk religion, but they don't identify with any of the biggies. You might call Taoism a religion and also a philosophy, but you might also call Buddhism that too. In China, you will find Buddhists and Christians and Muslims, but they're a minority. There's also Confucianism, and that's more of an ethical guide than a religion per se. Getting the numbers for who follows what religion in China, we admit, was problematic for us because every resource told a different story. It wasn't so hard in the USA. The vast majority of people are Christian, followed by a sprinkling of Judaism, Mormonism, and a few people belonging to Hinduism, Buddhism, and Sikhism. Quite a lot of people identify as not really having a religion at all. We can find one area where the Chinese and American people are quite similar, and that's the fact that marriage rates have dropped significantly in the past 30 years. If they do get married, the average age for the first marriage for men in the USA is 29.2, and it's 27.1 for women. In China, the average age for first marriage for men is 27.1 and 24.9 for women. The average age gap for marriage in both countries is around the same at two years. Around 30% of Chinese couples will divorce, and around 42% of American couples will divorce. It's also much more likely in China that the family will have some influence as to who you marry, while in the USA there's a bit more freedom. There's also a much more chance that a Chinese man will have a mistress, but we won't go into that today. China is changing and couples are changing, and there are some reports that young people are getting married and the family has less influence on the marriage. Some reports state that people are marrying with the absence of such things as a ring or car, a home, etc. Others just don't bother getting married because it's too expensive. Some people are now writing that marriage 
marriage traditions in China are waning, and young people are opting to fall in love more in line with Western cultures. So we'll finish on something where the two cultures and people are getting closer. Isn't that lovely? We think now you deserve something funny, like some of the most amusing videos we've made. Both are comparisons, but let's just say they're kind of off the wall. Make the choice and click on the video Average American vs. Average North Korean or our other comparison video called Gorilla vs. Bear. Who would win?